really starting to see the inklings of why Zika was touted in such a strong performance behind the scenes, and we're getting to see it on the stage. Yeah, back end, there's been a lot of development, obviously, while we're looking at the 280 carries. There's Hope versus Eyeboy. And Eyeboy wants on EDG alongside Mako. While we're going to pick Ban here for game number two, it's EDG who have elected to be on blue side. And the Volley Bear first pick with an Aphelios band on blue side. Interesting enough. Yeah, I mean, we'll give the Ash over to Vici that I boys look super strong on. That Kalista obviously banned away with the Aphelios, but uh, the flexibility that this Volley Bear offers, plus how strong his jungle clear, here, clear is, is why we see him banned so often on that red side. But prioritizing the least in ban more so over JJ, but we'll have to see how Leanne wants to go about this. I like that we've got a Nidalee ban as well going up against Lo Yen. Lo Yen on IG, we all remember, was a fantastic Nidalee. It still is. Looking at something that we haven't actually seen in the LPL for a long while, and especially with all the jungles up and available, wouldn't make as much sense, but his Graves in game one destroyed. He's ready to do it again. And there is the opportunity here for Leanne to try and play at range when it comes to these fights as well, because you can do relatively well in this jungle against the Volibear. Volibear will match you very heavily when it comes to your clear. Volibear is super strong because the Sky Splitter and that first clear. So we'll have to see how Leanne decides to play this one out and if he can have some sort of advantage like we saw in that last game. But hey, here's a Varus and Hope actually loved on hit Varus uh, in 2020 spring, back when Varus was acceptable as a first, you know, a second or third pick AD carry. I mean, we we all saw that clip of him against RNG on yeah. the Varus against Xiao Hu's casted and making that magnificent play. Didn't quite let them the win, but still looked real damn cool. We'll have to see if you can have a similar performance here because you've got EDG setting up for a very nice team fighting style. You've got a bunch of poke that can come through from the Varus, from the Zoe here, alongside a strong front line in this fight. Well, for Vici, while it's not the Kalista, it's like, well, it ain't broke. We don't need to fix it. We got the Graves, we got Zika's Gallia once again. And the beauty here is for Vici that you can start to ban away some of the champions that could be a nuisance against this Gallio, but True. you're also now going right. We are going to give the counter pick to Q. We are going to wait and see where this Volley Bear is definitively going to go, and then we'll figure out what we want to put Q onto. All right, Dagger, I like that kind of thinking, especially when you can just leave up the Nautilus, which is picked up in game number one as well. Fresh already taken away. You can see, look how active he is with Zika. Always like talks <laughs> and the whole champ's like, oh no, that was not a good time to have the camera on. He rolled his eyes. What, what did you do, Zika? <laughs> what did you say? Well, Brom's going to be the ban away. So mentioning it before, set up for Maestro's Nautilus once again. And again, this is Vici going right. We don't want to end up in the same problems that we saw in the last game. Despite them being able to overcome us, there is an opportunity here for EDG to play this kite back style, play at range, and try and have a Braum as this disengage. So they're trying to get rid of the fresh for the box, the same when it looks over towards this Braum, but also denying the safety for that bottom lane for the Varus. So the only one that's really up and available now is the likes of that Tam Kench that we saw in seasons past to keep that Varus. Safe. Yeah, a, a different dynamic in the LPL that we've talked about before. Um, that's been an overused conversation, but do you need to pick up top lane here, Dagda? You said it before. I mean, I'd rather see the support locked in here because you can always go towards something like a Leona, All something right. a bit more aggressive in the engages, and then you can wait and see where this top lane, or where this Volley Bear is going to go, if it is the jungle or if it is top lane. But it looks like Cube is just like, right, to be honest, I don't really care where it's going. If it's top lane, Kennen works super well into that Volley Bear. And if it's going into the jungle, well, at some point, EDG are going to try and engage on us. I've got this big Maelstrom that can do a lot of work, or I can get these flanks and try and get in on top of EDG. And I mean, the, the thing about this is you get the priority on the top lane first, right? So if that Volley Bear is going to the jungle, well, you're like, whatever. I can deal with a bad matchup as a cannon. And there you go, Volley Bear jungle into the Renekton pick. Uh, we've seen the cannon do okay to this pick, actually. Yeah, it's a skill match, more or less. It is slightly cannon favored, but it is still uh, depends on your position in lane. And Cube can have a reasonably good job there. Cube has looked great on this cannon pick yeah. and on a lot of those carry top layers we already talked about. So not surprised to see this. It's also a combo that we saw them take down, I think it was uh, two series ago, JDG, where they were able to play this double style teleport with the cannon, with this uh, the Galio as well, and control those side lanes beautifully and make it very difficult for you to operate where you want to try and find this engage where well, you've got a cannon who you're diving into or you've also got a Galio who's coming in on top of it. I mean, there is a build-up of a combo here from Vici Gaming 
with a lot of pick, a lot of chain CC that can come through from this red side squad. So when I look at this, as you said, look, Vici, they are going again for, okay, if you come into us, we've got an easy ride with the Ken and with the Galio, but also we've got to go forward in button in this Leon in the bottom lane who can look for these engages, set up for Ken and set up for Galio, and that looks all well and good alongside this Enchanted Crystal Arrow from the Ash. But when we look at the opposite side, Again, EDG looking to try and abuse this range advantage that they have. You've got the Varus who can put down some poke. You've got the Zoe who can do a similar job. Yeah. And then if you end up having a bunch of these Vici members dump, jumping on the top of you, Chains of Corruption to try and deny that engage. You're then running into a Renekton and a Volley Bear. And it's about creating distance again for the back line so that then they can continue this fight forward. It feels to me that EDG, you know, changing the comp here, a bit of breath of fresh air. I just love at the end there, we see Coma and uh, Clear Love bowing to each other, you know. These guys have been in the scene for a very long time. Clear Love as a player, Coma as that SKT slash T1 coach for many, many years. This guy breeds champions. And Vici in game one looked like the caliber of team that could make playoffs, that could potentially one day become champions but you know that's a far way into the future they have to show us against edg in game two that they can do it again otherwise edg will fight back we'll go to a game three and a 317 that needs some wins on the board do not doubt desperation because edg are at that point where they have to win every damn series in front of them oh, that's gonna be a tough call for them especially when they're already one down in this series vici but a very similar composition to the last game, despite some of the faces changing, they're still looking to find these flanks, find these big team fights, get these massive engages off. Whereas EDG, again, looking to try and play at range, okay. play a little bit around the uh, advantages they have in the Zoe and the Barris. We do have a pause, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize for the delay as we try and find out what that one is. But uh, maybe it's because there's too many library books in here. Three unsealed spell books this game. Uh, trying to build up a collection. When was the last time you went to a library? Library. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, see, we've actually got a really good one in my hometown, but because it has like a bunch of computer games and stuff there as well. Yeah, so like, right. you can go in and like nick one for back home for like a couple of weeks and then come back over. And nick one. Nick, take steel. steel. Yeah. Steel. Well, it's not really steel. It's like you do have to bring it. That's like, how libraries if you, work. If you, you say know, you, you beat it back. <laughs> yeah. You mind if I nick this? Yeah. Uh, I guess yeah. Yeah. But in Eng uh, you know. In England, they say, oh, I got nicked. Right? Yeah. yeah, got yeah. Stole, someone stole stuff. Huh? Yeah. Interesting. I feel like we say the same thing back in Australia as well. I don't know. Any Australians could correct me. As logo means we're going in. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, I know the camera cuts. Welcome back. How much have uh, the Chinese side paid you to just scream logo every time I'm Mercedes Benz I'm not at liberty screen. to say. <laughs> All I know is the keys will be left on my desk at the end of the summer split. And I will drive away a new Mercedes Benz. But that's uh, privileged information, and I did not just tell you that. <laughs> you know what? Driving here, I would have to be an ambitious kind of man. It, it is very difficult to drive here. Yeah. Just uh, a lot more people than back in Sydney as well. And driving in Sydney CBD, that was hell. On Honestly, Earth. I'd need to learn how to drive first, which is probably my that's, main yeah, issue. Yeah, I, I wouldn't drive yeah. without learning, to be quite <laughs> yeah. honest. Uh, but welcome. Hate Lethal Tempo on to Hope, as we talked about. Uh, as we've talked about many days, now that Faris is back on the menu in 10-14, not a perma ban, he has moved back over to the lethal tempo stuff. Yeah, and he was perma banned because of the uh, poke, the lethality style of Varus. It wasn't this on hit, so there is a little bit of a nerf that still goes towards the uh, on hit Varus, because obviously your laning phase got hit where you don't have as much push power with your Q. That got nerfed from the 150% total attack damage down to 125%, scaling to that 145%. Same with your Hail of Arrows, went from your 70 damage to 50 damage at level one, which is yeah. a bit harder for you to clear out these waves. As you can see, that's a beautiful thing for Eyeboy and Maestro want to shove in underneath this tower, but it definitely does hurt still in the early stages, but you will be super strong when you get to that two, three item spike as well. We're not going to see the deadly combo with a Zoe and a Varus, but still uh, different ranges. If Hope gets there, he has the ability to carry his Jejus towards mid. Seeker with a Justice Punch pays respect, backs away. And actually going towards the top side, so Luyan should butt heads while Scout has a redemption at level three. So JJ is trying to help Scout shove in this mid wave so that then. 
he can actually get this top lane scuttle. Because you remember, cast your mind back to the last game, JJ actually got none of the scuttles in that game. Yeah. But thanks to a pushing top lane, thanks to this pushing mid His as well. first one in the series. Exactly, and he's able to grab one for himself. However, Leon has cleared out his full top side. He'll be now able to transition back over to this bottom side and use his own advantages on this bottom half of the map to pick up a scuttle for his own. So it'll be even Steven rather than an early advantage for Leanne like the last And also not wasting time here for Leanne because he's heading straight towards that bottom side instead. Doesn't walk over vision. Doesn't waste time checking river. Just goes, yep, okay. He's already towards the top side. I know that. And the scuttle crab trade you talked about means Leanne will be free up to walk mid, walk into the enemy jungle, go somewhere else. There's that redemption. Perfect. I mean, that's ridiculous. There should be a level cap, I think. It should be like level nine. Okay, you can have a redemption drop. Look, there's a lot of things with uh, Zoe's pickups that should be done, but we'll have to see if it's yeah. going to be the case. Well, EDG off of that push are going to try and make a play towards topside. I will be spotted out. It's Cube is trying desperately to hold that wave off the turret, but now realizes it's a losing battle. It's a full wave as well, paying the respect important. He doesn't have the slicing maelstrom. The ward shy of the brush. It doesn't matter. They've already got the information that they need that look, JJ's on this top side. JJ actually still sticking around, but it means that you've had a camp stolen by Leanne on this bottom side. Potential to go for a second. Walking back in. I'm not sure Cube's on the right page. Uh, paid so much respect then, didn't. Now the reverse dive for Vici Gaming is teleports being channeled in. It's Scout. Vici being here is a bit dangerous. They get two kills under the turret, but Scout needs to trade on back. As the Renekton in front of them, the Flash Force, Loyan drops down. The Flash as well from the top laner. And EDG are taking this all. Scout goes forward. Maestro on the wrong side of Summoner's Rift. Has the Blast Cone, but Shaoshang wants to follow through. Won't get through. And EDG went out. Great answer back from EDG. And even JJ managing to get a camp here before he goes for his back to answer for the one that was stolen from Leanne. So overall, EDG gets so much more off that play. Although, as I say, that cube has got the push potential in this top lane. We have to shove in this wave, get a lot of CS denied away from Shaoshang, and had to teleport to the bottom side. But yeah, this is EDG answering well for Vici's early game plays. But I know I'd much prefer a kill onto the Zoe as cube yeah. missed the ward, and he thought, I'm not sure. Yeah, and that one tiny error here from Cube was, that was all that she wrote. Because at this stage, you assume that JJ's going to back, because sticking around for so long, especially when you know Leanne's on bottom side, so clearing out your own jungle as JJ, is a little bit risky. It does pay off, though, and it means that when this play happens, Xiaoxiang is able to teleport straight away in. Great turnaround play, and they're able to get multiple kills back onto the I mean, scouts to Zoe, who now has a kill, and... Picked up an assist, thanks to Xiaoxiang. Xiaoxiang also has two kills in his back pocket. Solo laners of EDG benefit so greatly from that trade. And EDG now a K ahead at six minutes in the game. We've got a Dragon that is sitting here waiting. And JJ who has control. And we'll get another scuttle crap. It's a great play for EDG as he talks about trying to set up JJ for these early game plays. Has worked out great. It means that he's even enough with Leanne at the moment that it's not going to be a big issue. We can actually turn over towards this dragon as that bottom lane is pushing in alongside Scout in the mid. Xiaoshang walked all the way down as well. Uh, partially to capture the mid wave, but also to add a bit of pressure. So with the security of this dragon, maybe not low yet. Smoke screen's in, but it will go down. They want to re-engage in this bottom side of river. Remember, Zika has ulti. Uh, Mako and Hope keep walking. They will force EDG to take the long way around, but it doesn't matter when all's said and done. They can still get back to bot side to pick up this wave, and that's the Dragon going over. So EDG off to a much stronger start. And with the compositions the way they are, as both teams are going to have to face up five versus five, if EDG are in the lead, you can have some great poke coming through from Scout, who's already got one kill and the last chapter already picked up. Same for Hope, who's going to want a bit of time to get up towards those two items. So honestly, EDG are looking good coming into game number two. And if they can find something bot, they'll elevate that even further. JJ starting to position around. Has also caught up in CS note. So, Lillian down here, but backing away for now. Is that Warriors? Uh, oh, yes it is. 
And one of the things that we are criticizing from EDG coming into this series was EDG's ability to push advantages when they have them. Yep. And in this game, they definitely have. They make the play topside, answer for the one bot. Now they're trying to put pressure onto Vici through constant roaming around the map by always making sure that they're putting some sort of pressure on this bottom side. So then Leon is forced to stay in his own side of the jungle. You can't really have I Boy and Maestro punish onto Hope and Mako in the manner that they would like to. And this whole time that Leon has got to try and match JJ on the bottom side, you're having Xiaoxiang who's doing a great job in this top lane off of the two kills that he's managed to pick up for himself. I mean, snowballing Renekton, and snowballing Zoe is uh, very good news for EDG. And Cube, you can see throughout the time Xiaoxiang's left lane, Cube hasn't been able to get turret plate. He's still standing, sitting at five stacks. Well, now Maestro moves up to top side with Leon. Both supports are not in the bottom lane. Transitioning to a fight up topside Dagda. Yeah, no flash on Xiaoxiang does have the Merc threads, but this is a solar flare that can come in and really change this top lane around just in time for Rift, but great job from the Renekton to avoid that play. Surviving, well, Zika, I said he has ult. Mako and JJ sitting on a ward. Michi are passing around a game of sneakiness. And they're trying to find some way to start off this play. So I boy, look, yeah, taking away this scuttle in bot side works well, but the oh. problem is that this wave is now shoved in on the bottom yeah. lane. So the opportunity for iBoy to roam towards the play topside and have that numbers advantage as Hope was dealing with his own wave under the tower has passed for Vici. And EDG now can look to take this rift out for themselves. And Vici can't look to contest. Really nice to by EDG. Just love the fact that EDG have reset. You know, whatever happened in game one, never mind. They've got themselves a couple of solo kills on the... Uh, solo laners, I should say. And Vici gaming their response while they know this is going on is to set up for bot, get a bit of turret planning themselves, but that'll be limited. Well, you assume that the play right now from EDG is to translate this play in towards top side. They've already rotated Hope up there, so they can dump a bunch of gold into Hope with this Rift Herald, get the tower for themselves. Vici just trying to answer as much as possible on this bottom side. As you see, Xiaoxiang is down in the bottom lane, but doesn't want to press too far in case Vici collapses onto it. Yeah, being really smart about this. Herald's gonna go down. This will be a, the quickest push of EDG's life in this game. And such a good look. So much better. We might actually get a series, you know? <laughs> EDG sitting three and seven, very concerned that they'll just be absolutely wiped. But uh, they're going to get in a turret as well on this top side. Beachy are moving up, tagged up, but there's not enough people, nor is there going to be enough damage. And the inner goes down. 2K is the gold lead at 11 minutes. And we saw this before, literally in the last game, except it was the opposite end. iBoy was the beneficiary of all this gold, all these turrets. And now with this dragon about to spawn in 50 seconds, you can have hope move into this bottom lane be some far superior when it comes to items over eye boy and even look to chip away at this bottom lane turret while still keeping pressure over towards the dragon which will be spawning in 40 seconds haven't seen a zika ult as of yet and he's got protobelt now so oh protobelt for the cannon as well the problem for Cube, though, is he's hovering on this Ignite. Ooh. So actually doesn't have access to the teleport right now, so he's got to walk down here, whereas Xiaoxiang can put, can put some pressure on this top lane if he wants to, but looking for a back right now, looking to finish off maybe an item here, although stops it to collect this wave. I'll be super curious as to how the influence of the top laners transitions here. There's Maestro. Probably above the sir. Paddle Star doesn't connect. The poke from Vara is still there. All right. Vici have River. And the top lane is the one, as you pointed out, that I'm keeping my eyes on because the CS discrepancy plus that back advantage that Cube has has netted that Hextech Protobelt versus just the team at from Xiaoxiang. So when you look at the top lane matchup, it's in their favor. Also, iBoy got a better back timing off in this bottom lane because of that 10 CS advantage. He actually finished. Oh my god, and Chance for the Dodge and Scout flashes away. That's two ulties. He portal jumped as iBoy shot the arrow. That is such a big swing and a miss from Vici. EDG now know they have control. They're just going to fight for this mid lane. And I boy is going to cleanse. Not sure why. The depth charge into the back line interrupts the hero's entrance. EDG have just wiped the fight without doing too much. Scout takes the flash and they head towards Dragon. Still have to be careful though, Vici. Still have cubes, ults available. No collateral damage though and no other ultimates available. Oh Means they God. will be dissuaded. Vici, we are just praising them for how coordinated they look, and 
been kind of messy so far. Everything can be traced back to iBoy. So, yeah, that was not good <laughs> at all. Really wasn't. After iBoy had a good game one. So two dragons now over towards EDG. Mountain Soul is what's on the map right now. You've also just got a, a turret plate knocked down by Scout in that mid lane as well. So he's in a really good spot. And everyone knows how obnoxious a Zoe that has a lead yeah. is. Well, you add in the poke that can still come through, regardless of the fact this is on hit Varus. You've still got some great engages, as we just saw, that are possible coming through from EDG. This is... Get it a little bit dicey for VG, especially with how uncoordinated that last play went. When you're in a comp that needs to be coordinated, the all-in that we saw in game number one, it's kind of facilitating the same way in game two, where we see the cannon instead. And, of course, the Ash and the Leona. But you know what I mean? Like, we've got the same type of comp. As it, it, it does a similar thing. Yeah. And we got to give props to EDG this time around as well for the uh, way that they've denied Zeke the opportunity to have these big ultimates because they've never really been grouped up in a pit where, oh, Zeke can come in and have this big play. Same when it comes to Cube. They've been very much contained, or well, playing through Scout and through Shaoxiang in the top lane so that then when Zika has these moments to move, they're actually able to disengage or move back. Like EDG have done a really good job as just keeping Zika in lane and not giving him the opportunity to make these plays. And you can see the results. It's netted in those turret plates. It's netted in the dragons. It's also a little bit of a, a kill lead for them as well, alongside yep. CS in the mid and it almost in that top lane. Yeah, trailing a bit there, but we've got a bounty on the croc and we've had since he's picked up that second kill. Uh, for Xiaoxiang, Black Lever should be arriving pretty soon, but my interest goes towards this next Herald Dagda. Uh, not going to be spawning for a bit. As Dragon up again in three minutes. Now, oh, Herald time has just come up. So, under a minute. And we will see that next objective spawn. EG have control of topside meanwhile. And the Scout just matching Zika bottom line. So for Vici, trying to fight this Rift Herald is actually their best bet. Because where Cube is positioned right now gives him a great flank position. You're looking at Zeke as well, who's the one on the bottom side, keeping Scout in check. So he can now start to, after shoving in that wave, move towards this top end and try and find this big engagement off of multiple different flank positions from Vici. I would like to see it all come together. But if EDG find this fight... There's a big part of me that just thinks this game's going to be run out from there, so... There is a potential, and J EDG are playing to stop that opportunity from Vici yeah. right now and run away with it. Because JJ are trying to make this play towards topside. They know where Cube is positioned is a big danger for them. So either shove in this mid lane and then try and make a play where they'll just have numbers advantage, or shove in this top lane super far, so it takes a second for Cube to join in. Got TP to start this one off. As he has a Proto Belt in his back pocket as well. Maestro with a good dodge, but Trouble Volvo does connect. Mako's running in for the dredge line. It'll connect, and he gets burnt down. Wow. The Hope Scout connection makes it a four versus five. Scout looking pretty good on this Zoe, and it's been a while, to be honest, since we've seen him pull it out, but looking good despite the fact that he hasn't picked up a win on it this split. Now EDG off that pick can look to crack open this mid lane. Although Zika off on the side. It just wants to clear the wave it seems here. Protobelt will help do that and keep the turret alive. The problem for EDG though is because they didn't get that mid lane turret and now Maestro's back on the map, all these ultimates are down for this Rift Herald fight. VG can look again to actually make a play here with just an ultimate advantage. All right, we begin. Dredge line to start it off. Zika goes golden, but he's going to be on a trouble. But when he comes back up alive, he flashes away. Solar Flare lands with the Zenith Blade. The Enchanted Crystal Arrow, the Wombo Cube, flies on in. But EDG has dispersed. Scout takes their time. Zika pulled back in. The ulti from the Volibear on the back end as he survives. Scout snipes away. Zika, Shaoxiang keeps them busy. And this Zoe is a nuisance. Leon finally finds him. Collateral damage is away. Cube does do a bit himself. It's an even trade, but boy, were they annoyed by Scout. So many broken stopwatches after that fight as well, where everyone seemed to go golden. They were annoyed by Scout, but that was the engage that Fichi wanted, where Cube was able to jump in, Maestro get into the midst of everyone setting up for Zika, and it meant that that back line of Iboy and Leon were able to free hit the majority of the time, but 
they're not able to turn towards the Rift Herald, JJ will actually be the one that can sneak this away. That makes it worthwhile for EDG. Continue the lead they already have while we watch the fight again. And watch how this ends up happening, because Hope is actually in a really hard position here where Maestro is consistently keeping him at bay. He's now got to get the hell out of the fight, force the flash away. And then the fight spreads out into too many parts for EDG to deal with. And you've got iBoy free hitting, like we are talking about, Leon on the top side as well, also able to just pick off members as they come forward. And that's where they're able to close out with just having more opportunities to provide that consistent damage between Leon and iBoy. Oh, so fickle that fight anyway, but hey, Dragon's gonna be started off here while we get some quick tidbits about the damage numbers that especially came through iBoy in that last fight. Uh, Lo Yen also up there, the Graves, pretty large, not in charge like it was in game one. So we'll have to see then what we will get as our next fight, but honestly right now for Vici, if I'm Zika, I got an opportunity here to freeze that wave on that top side for a little bit and just let that slow build, get some gold back into my favor, cause it a little bit of distress for Scout here because he has to overextend to pick up this wave. And you can see iBoy is positioned there if they want to try and make a play with the Enchanted Crystal Arrow, but may not be the case. It's not. Red buff and walk to lane. Uh, I just said Leon's not in charge. He's actually ahead in levels and CS over GJ, so maybe that's wrong. Herald mid and gold is going to be shared, mainly given over to Hope with 50 apiece for everyone else. And Herald should not be getting a second charge here. In fact, scout over the wall. Threat of this Zoe. It does not feel good to be Eyeboy right now, but at least he has cleanse. So... The thing for iBoy is though, like, when the fights go the way of Vici, he feels really good. Because he's the one that's able to get a bunch of these slows, he's able to follow the fight incredibly well because of all the CC provided between Cube and Zika. And we saw it in the last fight, that's why he was able to get so much damage off. But if it's EDG who are consistently poking with Scout, with Hope, and Vici are actually able to find that engage, iBoy suddenly feels a lot less safe because you do have a bunch of those uh, trouble bubbles coming over walls. The chains of corruption can land, and yes, he's got the cleanse, but there's so much more CC on EDG side that he has to be careful of. So I'm curious to see how these fights are going to set up around the dragon in three minutes, around some of these bigger objectives, because there is the opportunity. Hang on. I thought Liam was going to go in. Collateral damage is against the wall, gets hit by Scout. That's disrespect from the jungler of Vici. Continues to back after a scrying ward was there. Maestro and Cube now running on back. Tom will flashed away from EG grouping up and taking members down. I mean, you know you got spotted there as Leon. Like, it was a trinket ward. It wasn't like it was a, oh, okay, well, I didn't happen to look at it. But caught shopping, gives the kill over towards Scout, and EDG can get this bottom lane turret. Now, you do have an answer coming in from Zika on this top lane, but messy from Leon. After what was a very clean game one. And EG get more gold in their back pocket. At a 3k gold lead once again, Zika will challenge that by getting the turret himself. Uh, he does need a bit of gold because he's falling out of favor with Scout. My boy heading on up to at least Shadow and set himself up for a back now as well. We're heading towards two items, folks, as we look at this pro view again. Yeah, look, you just get this. I mean, he gets he's on a ward. He knows that he is. Wasn't even shopping, he so. He picks him. Yeah, I, d I don't know. I don't know what the call was there. Um, Yeah. And even if you don't, I mean, you can see the damage that comes through from Leon, or from Scout there. Like, yep. it would have been a bit dangerous. Chakras Arrow missed. And Soul Flare missed. Chains of Corruption connects. And Zika takes the Troll Bubble. Guess what? Mako's here as well. Dredgeline pulls him in. He'll go golden in the nick of time as Leon has respawned him now onto the Rift. Mako taking a bit of flurry hit from the AD carry. Cube coming in. Lucky Zika didn't die. Hope just dodged Very everything. Lucky. Yeah, well played from Hope, but that's what we love about Hope. He is so good at just the positioning that he has in these fights. It's why we've been talking about him as one of the top AD carries in the LPL for a while. It's just been unfortunate that EDG haven't been able to play around him as much as they did back in spring, but yep. you can still see when the fancy footwork needs to come in, he's the man. Man with two items. Also note that Scout has a Magi Soul Stealer here in this game as Colonel. Colonel digs 65%. Well, look, <laughs> Colonel Sanders, I'm not sure oh. yet. Instantly changes, 65.2. Oh, yeah. Last 0.3%. He listens. <laughs> I think at this point, if we look at how the game's been progressing, EG keep catching Vici off guard and catching them out. 
And we are looking at a 3,000 gold lead now for ADG. And when we look at the items, okay, we got the Blade of the Rune King. We got the Gwinsu's onto Hope. He's hit where he likes, where he's super strong. He'll go in towards the Runins next, which is super nice. But this is where he actually will have a major impact in fights. Scout has gone towards the Magi Soul Stealer, but is working his way towards that Spellbinder, which is going to do a lot of work as well. So they are really strong as the two carries on the side of EDG. Whereas when we look across over at Vici, can they not actually get a point? I mean, every time something hits from Scout, it's death. As Ivoy walking through the lane, Scout always off on the side, Trump off on the connect. Look at where Zika is. No Wait. flash available though on Zika. Great we go. you. Zika waiting for his engage. They turn on to Mako. At half health, he gets locked down and Iboy steps on forward. While Solfo is over the wing. Zenith Blade connects. Maestro gives an in. The cube ultimate is so far back. And that's it. The engage down and out. While Le Yen and Iboy need to find damage. Low health bars for EDG, but a lot burned by Vici Gaming. And they've got to be so careful here as Vici, because if they turn towards this dragon, that poke from Scout can be so deadly in this scenario. Remember, EDG used a lot as well. Teleport being channeled into the backline. Vici trying to cut it out. Scout's running in super fast. He used TP himself. Paddle Star down the line. He flashes, misses onto Le Yen. Dragon resets and in the pit. Zika has flash though. That's why he's well, playing so fast forward. He's here. Dagda, he's too far forward. Make sure he gets the lockdown. Cube doesn't have the ulti. Poked down. Two members dead. They want the dragon and it's secured. But now Vici will have to run for their lives. But they just gave so much gold into EDG's hands. Vici tried to make the play, but they just pings cannot do Baron. it. And there is pings for Baron, but Vici haven't backed yet. They can still go over and contest this. Cube doesn't have the ults available, but a decent amount of poke here still from iBoy, Cube, Leanne, even with those end of the lines. EDG realize this, and they're not going to go for the play. Cube coming into the mid lane, finding Scout. The smite is there. We'll give him a bit of extra damage, but iBoy doesn't have the enchanted crystal arrow yet. Scout will run away. Leanne spotted out, crossing through topside. And again, we're seeing that VG just not quite able to find the fights that they want. Zika, I thought we'd get this big flash taunt, but honestly, when you haven't really got the follow-up in Cube's ultimate, and iBoy is trying desperately to whittle through JJ's health bar, it's just not enough. So with the position here from iBoy not being able to threaten on towards Hope or Scout, you don't have enough damage to follow through where Leanne is clearly focused on the dragon. So the damage from Scout and Hope is just so much higher in this fight. And EDG, you're able to run away with it. I mean, EDG have been able to give their space accordingly, right? Cube's ulti wouldn't connect because EDG backed away. Same with Zika's. No one stands in the middle of it like they did in game one. Well, now support might be caught out. Maestro in the middle of nowhere. And he's just dead. Vici going to let him go. Four versus five. Baron's right there. And they can turn towards it. You've got uh, Blade of the Rune King on your Varus. He'll shred through that. You've also got TP advantage on this Renekton. I'm surprised that they're not just turning straight for it. Well, he's adding the side lane pressure for now. They want the pick instead. Loyan's walking into this as well, but Control Ward placed on down. The Mountain Rift is going to help. Loyan's still sitting in, but has the Blast Cone available. And EDG getting deep vision up towards his top side. Hope now walking back towards mid, and you can see Xiaosheng bottom is controlling the jungle. It's given the opportunity, though, for Vichy to get Zeke in position down in his bottom lane, so will be. Nothing coming from that pick for the moment except some vision control for EDG in this top side. Again, though, although the gold lead is 6,000, for both of these teams, whoever gets a lead, it still comes down to execution because the poke from the likes of Zoe here with that Rabadon's death cap completed is sky high, but also the combo from Vici can be very difficult if Hope gets caught out for him to escape away from. Zeke is all crucial, but I'm looking at Cube. If Cube hits that slicing maelstrom, everything comes into place for Vici Gaming in this second game. If Scout has free access with this Ravidon's death cap now picked up, then he has everything at his disposal. Also, three items for Hope. It is so much about execution in this game. EDG trying to poke with Scout, trying to make sure that they are the ones that have that health bank advantage. Whereas when we look at Vici, they want that big old engage very quickly, super fast, so EDG can't try and contest. Cube doesn't have flash. Scout off in the wing. Trouble Bubble does connect on the Maestro yet again. Scout not really missing this game. I like how EDG are playing this though. They're going slow, making sure they've got vision control. It's not like they're trying to push in for this turret in the mid lane and given the opportunity for Vici to flank. But, Leanne. 
Yeah, collateral damage to get out. That was a necessary tool. At least he didn't burn his flash, and that ulti should be up soon. But pings are getting spammed by EDG. Trying to get the blind hook as Mako and I, boy. Has to be careful. Hope has the ultimate available, but no flash. Still a bit of poke. Yep, put the cat away. My boy will heal it up, though. So, right now, though, EDG are just kind of shoving these waves into VG and not really being able to get too much from it. There is that dragon in just over a minute, which could be an easier time for EDG to draw VG out from underneath these structures, but this is getting a little bit tense, Asterix. It's been a lot this for a while. We're also heading towards the Mountain Dragon in 55 seconds. For VG, they've already picked up two. And the fact that it's not a soul will not be good for them. As we've just been dancing around Baron, been waiting for this next fight. And it feels like the longer we're under these towers, the more opportunities we have for Scout to find this big combo, to find the this paddle star that can actually turn this heavily in EDG's favor. But at the moment, Vici been doing a good job of avoiding that, not trying to stray too far into their jungle. Only after they see JJ and Scout boat appear mid, do they walk in, clear out some of the jungle, and try and get this vision back. However, as we talked about, that dragon is up. That would be a third dragon for EDG if they can get it. It looks like they're trying to contest Vici on the entrance into this river. Flynn gets caught out. That's secured. He has a CS lead. He's got a lot of damage, but still an AD carry. As EDG know it's up now. They have priority in that river. It's key word, as usual, is cube. Just takes a battle star. And once again, Chanacross Arrow flies out onto Maker. They force the engage. He misses the dredge line, but we're set up for the hero's entrance. The two-man knockup, rather only one. Shield right onto Jer, Jer Trying to get Eyeboy to step forward. He cleanses here. Backline, though. Cube gets the three-man slicing Maelstrom. Before he dies, he sets up for a trade. VG already lost core members, though. And with only three left standing for EDG, they'll win out the fight. Just about winning out the fight for EDG. Maestro gets the flash. Ooh, hang on. Maybe uh, you know didn't. what? They have one out the oh. fight because Loyang gets soloed by Shashan. And now they can actually turn over towards this dragon. You've only got Eyeboy here. He cannot try and contest this. And again, EDG are playing these fights incredibly well. As Maestro and Grage is onto the front line, everyone backs away. That one two combo from Zeke and Maestro not quite working out. But afterwards, they do find that re-engage off a of Q, but even then, EDG again, finding these picks, finding these plays, and getting dragons. 5k gold lead, now on Soul Point. We'll have a look at this again, because this was a close one. This actually could have gone a lot worse for VG. You can gauge onto Mako, the tank, the guy who's supposed to be engaged here, but watching this bottom side here, Maestro flashes in onto Hope, gets the sun, and sets up for Cube to get this massive three-man Maelstrom, but there's not enough damage there to try and finish folks off. Leanne can't get the kills. Eyeboy is in position to try and follow up. So they can't finish the low health members of EDG. And then we saw that pick from Xiaoxiong on towards Leanne. Yeah. I mean, Leanne dying at the end was a nice little caveat that set EDG up for Salt Point. And now when we look towards Baron, which is obviously the next port of call, this gets a lot harder for VG to find these big engages. No flash on cube, which is what was crucial in that last one. Yeah. Zika does have a flash of his own, Maestro doesn't. And when you look at that three-man unit who are the engage tools for VG, having no flash on both of them makes it very difficult for them to get into positions on towards Hope, on towards Scout, and they can continue as EDG to find the pokes, find the picks, and make it difficult for VG to operate. If you don't find Scout, 16 stacks of Majai is going to hit you in the face. Pretty hit. Pretty damn hard. As uh, JJ just wants priority in the river, Smite will secure the scuttle to give vision, but walking over a trouble bubble, locks him in place, scouts on his way with Ghost in hand. Beachy through this choke, and JJ running head first. Not what you want. Trouble bubble onto Iboy once again. He doesn't have to cleanse, use it in the last fight. Scout ready to poke on down once again. At least Beachy have wave clear, but EDG keep landing these trouble bubbles, Scout. Once more, Maestro at half health. And every time we get closer towards EDG going to Baron. And Maestro has to back now, and that could be the call for EDG to go towards Baron. They're going to start this up. VG need to get here. This is where it's dangerous for EDG. Being in the pit sets them up for VG to find these big engages. Loyan has a two-level lead over JJ as well. That's 80 extra damage on the smite as Scout pokes forward. 
And Leon suddenly at half health. Forward will be Zika again. Shield of Duran needs to be used as he comes on out. Solar Flare onto three. The Wombo built up first though. And EDG get Leon into a choke. Cube is late on the ulti. I boy is doing damage, but who else is there? EDG have four. Vici have two. And Xiao Shang can now back. He can teleport into this pit. And again, EDG are finding these opportunities onto the key members of Vici. So no engage can come through, no follow-up is there, and iBoy actually has to be a little bit careful. All right, iBoy doesn't care about a Renekton, and he's like, whatever, I'm going to get mid-turret. Cube's actually back out as well as the Baron has gone incredibly slow, but now should be taken away. EDG, that gold lead expands to 8k, expands at 33 minutes in the game, and they may have the tools to finally close this one away. But we finally see EDG playing these team fights so well. This was their strength in spring. This fantastic team who does these front to back team fights. That's exactly what we're seeing here, where Hope and Scout untouched in the back line. They're the ones dealing all the damage. JJ and Shaoshang providing this front line. The cube, iBoy just cannot get through. And look how much cleaner it looks from EDG. Yeah. I got a note there as well that Mako got a five-man ulti. It went all the way through the back and knocked up everyone on Beachy Gaming. So that's not the first time this game that Mako has really succeeded. And another Nautilus in this series that's kicking ass. So Beachy Gaming at the, the whims, the palms of EDG right now. I'm not sure that's the phrase, but you know <laughs> what I mean. That in the palm of their hands, EDG hold them. And they've got all the cards. EDG can have Baron, shoving these waves, still have that dragon about to spawn in a minute, they can turn back towards that. That, sorry, excuse me. Like, this yeah. looks absolutely amazing from EDG, where a clean game two, a uh, composition executed beautifully, and Vici just don't know what to do. Vici have been, uh, had their heads between their tails this whole game. A lot of moments where, especially for Maestro, being caught out, there's now a Chattacross Arrow. They want to make this their last fight. Solar Flare to lock down Mako, but this is the tank. Hero's entrance on top. He flashes away. And that's a lot burnt. Cube still has his ulti. He gets into the back line. But Golden in the nick of time for Hope. It'll be a trade-off as Zika re-engages. Mako gets low. Eyeboy heading forward. Maestro with the re-engage. They need the damage onto Eyeboy. Who's carrying this team? Xiao Shang is going to die as well. Zika survives. Somehow, it's iBoy all the way. And there's only JJ left. He's got to hold on. But Avicii find the perfect engage. And despite it looking messy, despite it not being how you wanted it to go at the start, Cube gets into the back yeah. line and it will net a third dragon <laughs> for Vici. I don't know how Dagda, after seeing the 8k goal behind, I was ready to pack it away for Vici. But salt point for both teams now. The Baron push denied. And we'll watch how this came through again. Maestro again, though, engaging, engaging onto this Nautilus wasn't the play, but watch Q. He sees Hope and Scout in the same place. He sees the portal, and that's his time to shine. Okay. Jump straight in. Pull, double flashes burn from ZK and Cube to get onto the back line, though, which means they won't have that available for an upcoming I fight. Boy. But iBoy as well, the confidence here, seeing his opportunity and finishes out this. But it's just a dragon. You still have to deal with a Baron in three minutes, where you won't have three of the flashes from Vici available. Well, actually, probably all of them available all right. for Vici. And this becomes a lot more difficult for them to try and fight back again. So although they've done it once, they still have to do it again oh under a much God. more strenuous situation. He did 8k damage. Holy moly. I mean, I, boy, it was the result of the success of his team. Yeah. You know, Cube and Zika. Uh, crucial ulti slash abilities that need to connect. To see that again, you've talked about it countless times where Cube needs that flash available. Zika doesn't have his anymore either. Eyeboy doesn't have his to make that aggressive play. But Enchanted Crystal Arrow is up, part of what started that fight. And Eyeboy is four and a half items strong. So we will see how the next fight goes. Because now we know. And it's really hard for VG, because ideally what they'd like to do is push in this mid and this side waves get control of these waves where they can then move into the jungle, get some vision down, and then it becomes a lot easier to find these flank plays. So you're not relying on the flashes from Cube and Zika to try and make these overreaching plays. However, because you're pushing into Scout, because you're pushing into uh -huh. Hope, because there's an Enchanted Crystal Arrow that's just they completely just combined, screen, yep. <laughs> it becomes really <laughs> difficult for them right. to make these plays.
Now, Baron's not up, but Vichy are in this choke. Even without Enchanted Crystal Arrow, feeling confident. Lo Yen hit a point in this late game. And this is perfect for EDG. If they're battling in these close quarter corridors, well, Hope can send out these chains of corruption across everyone. You're sitting ducks for Scout, who's got a bunch of terrain to pop in and out over. Uh, it's, it's open season for them. Cube's also going to be spotted out in the bottom lane while Scout's going topside. And we're getting a bit of side wave, side wave attention at 38 minutes of the game. You love to see it. Okay, we have a minute until this Baron, though. Yep. Everyone is going to start recalling. You can already see it coming through from EDG. Vici are going to do the same. And it really does feel like this is the final fight. This yep. is the one where if EDG win, fantastic. They can close out this game with that nice Baron buff and go towards the end. Vici, however, if they do end up finding these flanks where they can actually get this great engage off, still have a bit of an uphill battle where at least now though they can get the tempo in their advantage it becomes a little bit easier to try and push against scout not trying to be sieged upon underneath your own turrets where you've got these paddle stars these sleepy trouble bubbles constantly coming your way oh if scout hits a trouble bubble that that has been the end of the fight for vici forces out a summoner or even worse picks up the kill scout is a level 18 zoe who has a magi's at 18 stacks and four other items in his inventory. And again, we said what Vici really want is some wards so that they have the opportunity to go for flanks, understanding where EDG Woo. are. But because EDG are doing a, such a good job of guessing oh mid party, God. guessing vision control of their own, it becomes really hard for Vici to try and operate in this fight. So at least at the moment, the shining light for Vici is the more time they buy in this mid lane push, the more time it gives them to get these flashes back up. And oh, no. no. Yeah, what did I say? Loyen's been caught everything on him, and that's four versus five in the blink of an eye. Maestro will have to re engage or face death. The exhaust down, he just wants to escape. Eyeboy moves into the choke, the solar flare, the hero's entrance. Has it been a ruse? Zika needs a multi man taunt and doesn't find it. Xiaoxiang heading forward, but Maestro will meet his maker as well. Three versus five with a Baron. Back on the menu. There was actually a potential there for Vici to find their fight, but Cube wasn't on the same page. Zika goes in, Cube is in the base, and it means that combo we are talking about can't come through. EDG get the fight, they get the picks, they get the Baron, and we just said if EDG get this Baron, that's all they need to help close this game out. Now they can go for these perfect sieges where you've got those barred up creeps. There's 20 seconds until this Mountain Dragon as well. And off the Baron recalls, EDG can get here. And Scout hits the trouble bubble and the game feels like it's done again. Yeah. 10 seconds, you talked about EDG on the way. Flashes are up though. This is where Vici again but can look for these plays. Maestro's not here. He's only just respawning. And this is so a point. So with Maestro not here, EDG started up straight away, but they're in the pit. They are vulnerable here. Vici need to make the play, but it's gone. Yep, and we roll the dice again, because six minutes. Well, the dice are fixed, right? We know Elder's coming up in six. We know that EDG the thing now has is, the though, tools. Vici are this massive burst combo, right? That it's Cube and Zika jumping in, and that's where that massive amount of damage comes through very, very quickly. On EDG side, you've now got a shield, you've now got double mountains as well to help you out with resisting some of that damage that's going to come through. And even when you look at the build path from the likes of Hope, he's got Wits End, so he's got that magic resist in. You've also got the Merc Threads there for Scout, who will have his own flash available to jump away from this engage and the reduced amount of, uh, oh. or increased amount of tenacity. It looks good here for EDG. Hi, boy. Oh, Ooh. baby. Scout again. Wants the finishing kill. Eyeboy's going to heal on up on the minion wave. He'll do it quickly, but they sacrifice the inhibitor turret. And EDG on the warpath to make this a game number three. A 10k gold lead inhibitor is going to drop. Cube now joins. He has flash available. This will require a miracle. Everything perfectly executed from Vici, but EDG won't give them the chance. Walking away from the base with a broken inhibitor. And you know what? Just get towards that elder, and then, then it's a sure thing. Yeah, look, it's slow and steady here from EDG. Oh, well, yeah, Zika in that? a bad position. He's going to just punch in the way. Tentacle Sarah follows out. Hope instantly QSS to make sure on the back line flashes in the hero's entrance as well. Cube in with the flank, but it's only onto the two tankiest members. The shield of Duran connects, but look, here comes the Renekton, who in the late game hits the back line pretty damn hard. Forward EDG march, and iBoy won't be able to save this one as he gets locked down. Moves into GA. 
This is going the distance, and Vici collapse. ADG play their composition so well, not given the opportunity for Vici to try and fight back. And now, EDG will find themselves 1-1 hey, in the series. Warming up to the series, what I say is Vici just got outclassed. We've had one apiece. Game three could be anyone's ball, as far as I'm concerned. EDG looking so much cleaner in that second game. Able to execute perfectly. They understood how to play it out.